Over the last 15 years, I can't think of a method that has had as much of an impact on lure fishing in the UK than the drop shot rig. This simple tactic has proven itself to be especially effective for targeting perch, and not just small ones either. Some of the biggest perch in the UK over the last decade or so have been caught on this rig. And in this Predator Basics video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a breakdown about the history of the rig, how to tie it, the distance to use between the hook, the drop weight, the types of soft baits you can use, the gear, and how I like to fish the rig. When the method first became popular in the UK, it was already nothing new. The tactic actually originated from Japan and it was designed by bass anglers fishing in tournaments on some of the large lakes out there as a method to present a soft bait in a very finesse fashion so that the weight would drag along the bottom and then the soft bait could be suspended above the bottom and fished very, very slowly back to the boat. This then started to gain momentum in America and a lot of bass anglers started to use the method in their tournaments and it absolutely cleaned up. So much so that it actually gained the nickname of the cleanup tactic. What bass anglers would do is use other methods such as crankbaits, jigs, spinnerbaits to find fish and then once they'd found a shoal of fish and the bite started to dry up, they'd switch to a drop shot rig and often pick up a few more fish. It then became popular in Europe and then over time reached the UK and now we know it as one of the most effective lure fishing methods for targeting perch. So what is a drop shot rig? Well if you've used a soft bait before you may well have used it on a jig head which is where the weight is fixed to the front of the hook but with the drop shot rig the hook is tied to the fluorocarbon and then you leave a longish tag below the hook and then you clip what's called a drop weight onto the end of the tag. And this way you're able to fish the soft bait suspended above the bottom. Now the depth or the length of the tag that you can have between the hook and the drop weight can vary but I'll touch on that a little bit later. But essentially you're suspending a soft bait and you're able to drag it really slowly along the bottom and it just presents a lure in a completely different fashion really. You're also, uh, you're also able to fish it a lot slower and at times even static and this can also be a really good method of picking up fish. The great thing about the drop shot rig is that it's super easy to tie and I'll quickly explain to you how I go about this. Everything that you see on the top of my bag here is what you'll need to tie up a drop shot rig. When it comes to leader material, fluorocarbon is what I use. So it has less stretch, it sinks and it's also see-through. Remember this is a method that is designed to be fished very slowly so the fish will have a lot of time to inspect the lure. A swivel, I like a small swivel like a size 14 or 18 for joining the braid to the fluorocarbon. The drop shot hooks, you'll notice that they've got a slightly out turned eye and the reason for that is to help the hook point stand out when the hook is tied to the fluorocarbon. And then these are called drop weights. So I've cut off roughly about three foot of fluorocarbon. Some people might say that's a little bit long but it's always good to have more to work with and you can always cut the rig down if you need to have a shorter distance between the hook and the drop weight. Now there are two different knots that you can use for tying a drop shot rig and I'm going to show you both. Probably the most well known is the Palomar knot and I'm going to start with this one. So what I do is that I meet the two ends of the fluorocarbon together. I pinch this together in the middle and then I push this through the eye of the hook like so. 
Now what I do is create a loop, take the doubled up piece of line through the loop you've made twice, then take the hook through this loop then tighten down. I'm just going to quickly moisten the knot and that will just help it sit a lot more nicely. So make sure that when you are tying down the knot that loop that you have formed earlier goes over the front of the knot like so. And what you'll end up with is your leader but with a very long tag. But what you do is that you bring the tag through the eye and as you can see it's helped the hook point kick out really nicely so you'll notice that the knot is sitting on top of the eye of the hook and the fluorocarbon that side will be attached to a small swivel that joins to the braid and then the tag end below is what you'll use to tie your drop shot knot to or clip your drop shot weight onto. So the second knot that I like to use, which is not so commonly known, is a drop shot knot. So again, I cut off a similar length of fluorocarbon around about three foot or so. And instead of doubling up the line, what we do is we put one end of the fluorocarbon through the eye. And then, I'll struggle to get this bit in frame, but you meet the two tag ends together so that the hook sits at roughly a halfway point. What you then do is create a loop above the hook and then roll the hook through the loop three times. So it should look something like this. Then you moisten the knot so it slips down nicely and as you can see as I pull the knot down, again it really helps that knot kick outwards and the hook point sits upright. And they're the two knots that I like to use when I'm tying up a drop shot rig. So now that I've tied the hook on, I'm able to tie the swivel to the braid and then join the fluorocarbon to it. I've already done this just to save time but the reason I use a swivel to join the fluorocarbon to the braid is to reduce line twist as braid does have a tendency of twisting. So the tag below the hook is where I clip the drop weight onto and there's no right or wrong distance to have between the hook and the drop weight. Um, it really depends on how active the fish are, how close you want to fish to the bottom, uh, it's really just personal preference. As an all-round distance, I like kind of around nine inches, so I'm just going to cut the tag so that I have around nine inches. And what I'm going to do is tie a tiny half hitch at the end, and this will just help the drop weight clip in place. Um, this is a pencil weight which is much more streamlined and the lake that I've been fishing today is quite weedy so um, pencil weights cut through the weed much easier. I'm just going to slide the tag through the clip and by tying that little half hitch there that's now locked in place so that that won't slip off if it becomes snagged. So 
So once the rig's tied up, it's now time to choose the soft bait that you're gonna be using. And the drop shot rig is what is described as a finesse lure fishing tactic. So it's designed to be fished very slowly and with minimal movement. So there are certain lures that excel when it comes to being fished on a drop shot rig. And I've laid some of my favorites out here. So these two here are from the UV floating creatures range. Um, this one here is the swing ball, and then you've got the funky worm. The TPE soft plastics are very buoyant, but you can also use a normal PVC soft plastic for fishing on a drop shot rig. So one of my favorites is the slick finesse, which is a split tail. It's very pliable, so it's got lots of movement, and it doesn't take much action of the rod tip to bring that soft bait to life. Now you can use shads on a drop shot rig, but the shads that I like to use have very small paddle tails. So here we've got a slick shad, and then here we have a micro tiddler fast from the micro lures range. The reason for this is because, as I mentioned, the drop shot rig is designed to be fished really slowly. So these are why these kind of style soft baits are particularly effective for fishing on the drop shot rig. To maximize the movement of the lure, I just push the hook point through about a quarter of an inch under the chin of the soft bait, almost as if I'm hooking on a maggot. And that allows the soft bait to have tons of movement with no hook running through the middle of the body and makes it look especially lifelike. Because these soft baits are so pliable when they're rigged in this fashion, they're very easy for the fish to crush. And you'll often find that the hookups on a drop shot rig are really good. And the fish are often hooked right in the scissors. Well, the light's starting to go now, so I should probably have a few casts and show you how I fish it. The drop shot rig is a very simple method to fish. So, I'll start by casting out. I'm just gonna do a short underarm cast here just because I've got some sunken trees in front of me that look like a, a good area where perch might be hiding. I keep the rod tip up at about a 10 o'clock angle and I can watch the rod tip to help me detect bites. And it also helps me detect when the lures hit the bottom, which it has just done. You'll notice that the braid has dipped backwards. So what I'm gonna do is just very slowly lift the rod tip so I'm dragging the lure back towards me. The weight wants to be kept in contact with the bottom all the time and you can see as I drag the rig back along the bottom you can see the rod tip sort of bumping into any little bits of weed and rocks and gravel. And that alone is enough to bring those soft baits to life. Um, you really don't need to impart much movement at all. And you can just fish it static. So something that I often do is I'll have a spinning rod set up that I can use for various types of lures like crankbaits and jigs. And then I'll have a rod with a softer tip, such as this rod, that I can use for a drop shot rig. And what I'll often do is that if I've had a couple of bites in an area where the crankbait or jig or other type of lure hasn't worked, I'll switch to a drop shot rig and I can literally just hold it there. And if you're fishing in a river especially, the current has enough movement in it to make that lure look really appealing to a perch, a chub or even a zander. And I just work the lure all the way back to my feet. Occasionally you can impart the odd twitch into the rod tip just to bring a little bit more movement to the lure. But I find that just dragging the weight along the bottom is often enough. Another one of my favorite ways to fish the drop shot rig is vertically. And this is especially effective when you're fishing from a boat or you're targeting a deep margin on say a canal, for example. And you can often hold the lure there for a very long period of time and concentrate on areas that you think may be fishy looking locations. So if you're wandering along a canal, 
which can often look like a pretty bland section of water. Concentrating on the marginal areas, which are probably one of the biggest features on the canal itself, can lend itself well to a drop shot rig. As I mentioned earlier, when I'm targeting perch, I'll often carry two rods with me. One of those will have a stiffer action that can be used for using a wide variety of different types of lures, crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jigs, and then I'll have a drop shot rod. And drop shot rods often have a softer tip, almost like a quiver tip actually, and this is to help detect what can be very subtle bites. So this is a Prism X drop shot rod. It's seven foot 10 and it casts between five to 21 grams. I don't really find myself using a drop shot weight heavier than 15 grams very often, as it'll often cut through the current very nicely, especially when you're using a light braid. I like the seven foot 10 model as I feel that it suits my style of fishing. Personally, I prefer a longer rod when I'm targeting perch, as I feel like I get a lot more control and also it's great for fishing over bankside vegetation. Paired with this is a 1000 or 2500 size reel. Um, I've put a 1000 size Prism X on this rod and it's a really nice light outfit and very well balanced. And then that's spooled up with 0.10 millimeter diameter braid. So this is equivalent to around about 15 pound. And that's it really. That's all the gear that you need to kind of get you set up with a drop shot rig and rod. We've been fishing on a crystal clear gravel pit today and because it's been so bright, it's uh, made the fishing particularly difficult. But now that the light started to go, the perch have switched on and a few bites on the drop shot rig have saved me from a blank. So I hope you've learned a little bit from the video that you've watched today and give the drop shot rig a go.